Sorry about that. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of the 3D Boxing Podcast. It is good to be back. Uh, back with another edition of Quick Hits. We're going to get into the Clarissa Shields card. Uh, Clarissa Shields looks sensational. It's the only real card, big card this weekend, uh, on Saturday at least. Uh, we're going to get into that. But before we do, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog, and all forms of social media. Quick Hits comes at you every day, 8 to 10 minutes a day, to keep you up to date on the latest, greatest boxing news. And rumors, please hit the little subscribe button, all that good stuff. Um, the notification icon, you, you know what I'm just chatting about. Uh, also, um, um, I'm losing my brain. Um, Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. Uh, it's the other channel, please subscribe to that as well. Texas Boxing Scene. All proceeds go to autism research and recovery. Um, so Clarissa Shields had a homecoming fight. Um, Little Caesars Arena. Um, there's not much to say other than she was the quote. I mean, uh, the only small criticism, and I'll start with that, is um, she could press a little more for knockouts. Um, she could press a little more for, for knockouts. She's got all the belts at 160. Um, she can go to 168 and get all the belts there. She is the best woman's fighter in the world. I, I wanted to give it to Sneeze Estrada, but it, it, it's the quote. Um, Cornhoe is not good. Um no disrespect. I'm sure she hits pretty hard. She's crossing her feet, hands down, chins up, and she's fighting the best women's fighter in the world. How do you think that's going to go? It's not going to go well. Right? Like, it's not going to go well. She just dominated. She, uh, she kind of did dominate Savannah Marshall. She beat her clearly. Beat her clean. Beat her clear. And, and now she's fighting Cornhoe. And, and Cornhoe comes in crossing her feet, fundamentally a mess, poor footwork, and she's going to fight the best fighter in the world. Best woman's fighter in the world. It's a bad look, man. Um, it's a bad look. Clarissa Shields was dominant against, you know, a, a reputable fighter with power. Again, this is just a hitter, it seems like. And when you have just a hitter against Clarissa Shields, this is what it's going to look like. What I, I want to give Shields a lot of credit for, she came out on fire. She was gunning. She was uh, throwing mean shots. You know, she was winding up. She was putting a, a lot of stank on her shots, and, and she was hurting her. Um, Cornhole was tough and, and, and rugged, uh, but Shields looked motivated. She looked like she wanted to get a stop for the fans. Like, you, you look at Clarissa Shields' record, it's phenomenal. It's 14 0. She's got just the two knockouts. Um, and she hasn't gotten a knockout since 2017 when she knocked out Nikki Adler, uh, which is at, also in Detroit. Um, in, in what was a, a really, really good fight, um, for her, I mean, a really good performance from her. Um, she won, uh, that was her first world title. Um, I, I think she was, yeah, she was the main event in that. Uh, Jericho Quinn was on that, Jericho Quinn was on that card. Um, and anyway, that was the last knockout she got. Um, I felt like she could have got the knockout here. Um, Cornhole, tough and rugged, but she was pretty winded, pretty gassed, pretty shot. And in the F the seventh, it's like, okay, Clarissa may get her out of here. And, you know, obviously the call was, if I was over on the cards, way, way gone by that point. Um, and she kind of just sat back after that and, and, and outboxed Cornhole instead of trying to gun for the knockdown. I, not a major issue. I'd have preferred, like, get her out. She's outclassed. You're way too good for her across the board. Just get her out. Just get to finish her. And I, I felt like she could have. And I feel the last three rounds of that fight, she she was just cruise control, right? Like, she was just content with letting it go the distance. And I, I think 
She didn't have to be. She could have finished her uh, because she came out shot out of a cannon. Um, she was in a groove. She was rolling with shots, countering shots. She was leading, jabbing, landing the right hands behind it. Like she was just sharp, 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 and she was throwing punches with extra stank on. I mean, throwing meaner punches than I've seen before. Um, and I wanted to see her get a knockout. You know, what's next for her? I, I really don't know. You know, the only other fight at 68, uh, French John Cruz, you know, I, can she go down to 54? I, I suppose she can. Um, there's not a ton for her right now, you know, um, if you go to 54, 54 has got the names. It's got Harper, Jones, and Cecilia Brackus. I, I don't know what's the deal with Cecilia Brackus, but it's got Terry Harper and Natasha Jones. Uh, look, I'm not saying these people, Hannah Rankin, I, I suppose, is there too, right? Uh, I'm not saying they're going to beat her or, or uh, really even give her much of a challenge, but their name values, their fights, that will be marquee. Um Terry Harper and Natasha Jones. I mean, does that, that move the the, the 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 needle for any of y'all at all? Not really, right? Um, there's that old woman's fighter, Chevelle Hall, back. But, I mean, there's better names at 54 than there are at 60. Uh, you know, if we're looking at her opponents, that's kind of what we're looking at. Natasha Jones, Harper. I mean, I don't know if there's any appeal in a Brockus fight. Um And then at 68, it's Cruz, which is a good fight, which she's won in her pro debut. You want to say both guys, both ladies have gotten better. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with seeing that again. Uh, in the co-main event, a little bit of controversy. Uh, a little bit of controversy that benefited the hometown fighter. Um, I, I thought Wendy won clearly. Um, I, I was in line with the uh, – Rosemary Gross, Gross that had 77-74 in favor of, of, of um, to, uh, Wendy Toussaint. Adriel Holmes got the other two cards. 77-74 in his favor is, is rough. Um, what happened was Wendy had lost some of the early rounds to come on strong in the middle rounds and really seize control of the fight. Um, then in, in the uh, eighth round, there's a nasty headbutt. I mean, a gruesome headbutt that opens up a massive cut on Wendy's head. Wendy's cut open. He's busted. He's bleeding. Um, the doctor, you know, the ref looks to kind of wave it off. It goes to the doctor. The doctor says he can fight. Now, this is where it gets interesting. So the doctor lets him fight again. I probably would have I mean, look, I'm not a doctor. I'm looking at this thing. This thing looks grotesque, right? Doctor says he can fight. All right, so Ralph lets him fight again. He fights with you know thirty seconds longer, and uh, Holmes is getting getting it going. Holmes is having his first good round in a while, and the, the butt thing just starts gushing open again. So they go back to the, the, the doctor, and the ref waves it off, and he brings the doctor. The doctor says no, he can fight, and now there's like a little confrontation between the doctor and the ref. And the doctor says he can continue, but the ref stops the fight anyway. To me, why? If you're stopping the fight, why? Why are you even asking the doctor, right? Because obviously the doctor's opinion has no has no levity. The doctor said he, he he's good. You can hear the doctor and Woody and uh, Wendy say, "I'm good," and they stopped anyway. So I don't understand why you even brought the doctor in. Why? You know, you were hoping that the doctor agreed with you. He didn't. Then you make yourself look silly. I, I I can't really remember a particular situation where the doctor said no, go ahead, no, go ahead, continue, and the, and and the uh, ref waves it off. But um, the Wendy's promoter, which is Star Boxing Georgia Guardia, has said that they're gonna uh, they, they petitioned the IBF for a, a rematch, which I hope they get. Like I I, I told y'all on Twitter, this was gonna be a fun fight. This was gonna be a good fight, um, and it was it was it looked like it was headed that way, and we, we got a premature stoppage here. In, in a fight that was close, competitive, that I thought Wendy was winning. You know, if you want to talk about corruption, you got a bogus scorecard, a real bad one from one of the judges, and a ref that stopped the fight to give the home to, to go to the corrupt scorecards. Um, 
for the hometown fighter in, in, in his home city. I'm not saying it was corrupt, but I'm saying if you want, uh, there's a lot more to point for corruption at that than there is in Haney Lomachenko. That's my point. Um, also on the card, Joseph Hicks looked real good. Joseph Hicks looked real good. And, 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 and he destroyed Antonio Todd. And Antonio Todd is no joke of an opponent for a 6 0 guy. Uh, Hicks is not 7 0. Um, you know, I, I would say. Uh, yeah, I, I would say Hicks did a better job with him with Todd than Anthony Sims did. Um, obviously, the Connor Coyle did. Connor Coyle arguably lost to him, and that was only a year ago. Um, so did Hugo Santeno. He beat Hugo Santenio, right? So this is a legitimate guy. Um, and then he, he lost a real close fight to uh, Eddie Ortiz. Yeah, that's what he has. But this is a legitimate fighter, and uh, Joseph Hicks dominated him. So that, that's that's impressive. Uh, that's that's a a really really good win um, for this early in his career. So that that, that was good to see. Uh, so I mean that that's basically the card. You had Hicks. You had the, the controversy with Toussaint and Holmes, and then you had uh, Clarissa Shields just absolutely dominant in her performance. So let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Follow 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing blog on all forms of social media. Quick hits comes at you every day, 8 to 10 minutes a day. Keep you up to date on the latest, greatest boxing news and rumors. Please also subscribe to the other channel, Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. All proceeds from that channel go to Autism Research and Recovery. It's already June 4th, 2023. From Texas to the world, thank you, and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.